All right. Well, thank you, Faith Rivera and Harold Payne. We're going to love that song. It's perfect for this month. Um, and then we're going to have a couple of different, for those of you watching live stream or later on, a couple of different videos of them singing. So that'll be nice. And here you're just going to have to imagine it. And that's good, too. Our imagination is important. Well, as it's been mentioned, um, we are offering an official evening of peace here at LEC on Friday, September 20th, to coincide with the International Day of Peace on September 21st. And, of course, our moving sale. And as some of you may know, um, the International Day of Peace was established by the United Nations in 1981, over 40 years ago. And this year's theme and logo is based on the concept that, and I quote, wars begin in the minds of men, so it is in the minds of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed. The International Day of Peace has always been a time to lay down weapons and observe ceasefire, but it now must also be a time for people to see each other's humanity. Our survival as a global community depends on that. Rather than talking about peace on Friday, September 20th, we'll be offering an experience of peace. Peace, like love and like life itself, is an experience and can only be known through experience. And all this month, as our focus is on peace, I'll be using words, a lot of words. And we can look at those words at, like road signs that can point us in the direction of where peace can be found, which is within us. But each of us, like any other journey, the journey to peace we must take on our own. No one can take a trip for us. We have to take it ourselves. And because war as well as peace begin in the mind of man and woman and humans and probably only humans, We'll be focusing this month on a world peace that can only come about through our own individual choice to experience it and express it through practice. Peace begins with our finding it within ourselves. And then are becoming familiar with the way peace feels within us. So often, feeling stressful, feeling anxious, feeling fearful, feeling unpeaceful is a habit that we don't even notice. Peace becomes stronger in us through our moment-to-moment -moment practice of it. No matter what might be happening in our own life or the world around us. Peace can only manifest in the world as each of us becomes the peace that lives 
in the world. A peace that doesn't demand that certain conditions take place first in order for us to live it. I mean, we all want world peace. I mean, even those who shout the loudest and disturb the peace want peace. But so many of us have conditions that we want met first, mostly by others, before we are willing to call a truce in our thoughts, in our words, and in our actions. But a peace that is conditional can't last. Because conditions in this world change. A temporary peace controlled by circumstances is not the unconditional peace of God that is eternal and belongs to all of us. The peace of God. Universal peace, the peace that just is and passes all human understanding, is a peace that doesn't depend on reasoning or concepts or conditions. And that peace is present everywhere, all the time, under all conditions and in every situation. It's present in the sounds of a forest and in the ripple of a stream. And it's also present in the midst of chaos and confusion. And the way of knowing we read every time the mind trusts in the one that created it and rests in that peace, a miracle occurs. The one that created us doesn't go anywhere without us. It is we who turn away and then pray for peace to return. But we can send up prayers for peace in every language and through the words of every religion. But unless we stop fighting with each other and demanding change from others without changing ourselves, unless we choose to practice peace by trusting in the one that created all of us as one, peace on earth won't come through us or become our experience of the world. Gandhi wrote, if we could change ourselves, the tendencies in the world would also change. This is the divine mystery supreme. A wonderful thing it is, and the source of our happiness. We need not wait to see what others do. If we're waiting for the world to change, if we're waiting for people to agree with us or even to agree with each other, if we're waiting on anything outside of us before we feel peaceful in the world, we're going to be waiting a long, long time. Our prayers would better serve us and world peace if we prayed for our own return to peace. It's always there to be recognized by us, to be experienced by us, and it's always there whether it's recognized by us or experienced by us. Which brings us to the title of today's talk, Beyond the Forecast. So the other day I was thinking about why 
the weather forecasters get the forecast wrong so often. Imagine a lot of you wonder that from time to time. The answer from a spiritual point of view seems obvious. They're focused on just the three-dimensional world of weather. I know. That's their job. And we don't expect the weather people to use a divining rod or to check with other dimensions for advice. But we are aware that forecasting the weather is not something that's predictable simply by looking at it. Just like everything else in this world, the weather can change without much or any notice. Winds can unexpectedly change direction and increase or decrease as they do. And they can change the whole weather picture in an instant. They gather up storm clouds that look ominous and then blow them away without a drop of rain. The accuracy of weather forecasting is so low that it serves as a reminder to us that a focus on the world alone isn't going to tell us much of anything accurate. Weather forecasters may be able to tell us the obvious and the limited, what the options are that we can expect, even when what they tell us to expect doesn't come about. A focus solely on the world isn't going to tell us more than what we can see with our eyes. And there's so much more to life, so much more to us. What we can see, weather-wise or otherwise, using only our five senses, won't tell us the greater possibilities for us that are within us and around us that have yet to be revealed to us. And expand our point of view of what life is and who we are in it. It can tell us that great spiritual moreness that is beyond our five senses but speaks to them. Of what is available to us that will heal our body or heal our relationships or heal the world we see. If we predict the outcome of a situation by using only worldly observation, if we predict the odds of being healed, happy, and prosperous, based only on the limitations of world information, if we listen to the confusion of conflicting thoughts in our mind or in the world about anything, and every thought has a conflicting thought, we won't experience the happiness or peace of mind that trust in the invisible the always dependable, the never changeable, and always for us peace of God will bring. 
Paramahansa Yogananda wrote, when you're worried, there's a static in your mental radio. The song of God is the song of tranquility. Nervousness is static. Tranquility is the voice of God talking to you through the soul radio. That holy station is available to all of us, no matter who, no matter what. But we need to make a conscious choice to turn to it within us and tune into it with a quiet mind so that we can listen, so that we can hear it, so that we can feel it, so that we can live it. So here's a question for all of us. When something confusing or disturbing or dramatic or traumatic occurs in our life or in the life of a loved one, when we hear something confusing and disturbing and dramatic or traumatic on the news, is our first thought, I better turn my dial to soul radio so that I can hear what's really going on? Or is that thought our last resort thought? After we've checked with everyone we know, and after we've gone down our list of worldly options to fix the problem, including letting someone else fix it. Now, you've all heard it said, or likely all heard it said, even by me, that A Course in Miracles tells us the world is insane. But, in fact, that particular line has become a go-to phrase for many of us when crazy stuff happens in the world. But even though A Course in Miracles uses the word insane 271 times, it never once says that the world is insane. But it does say this. Your thoughts determine the world you see. You are not trapped in that world because its cause, your thoughts, can be changed. It seems like a good time for all of us, or those of us, who have been affirming that the world is insane, to cease that affirmation. Because we see the world, we believe, is there. And though it may seem, nowadays, that this world has become crazier than Huda. And though the forecast may be from a world view that it's going to get worse before it gets better, bless those weather forecasters, because if there's one thing they have taught us through example, is that any forecast can be wrong. And that anything can change without notice. A storm can turn into a sunny day like that. And our world can turn into peace in the twinkling of an eye. But it's up to each of us. We determine the world we see. We determine the nature of the world that we affirm is there. If we're willing to let our mind trust in the one that created it, 
and rest in that peace, no set of circumstances, no matter what they are, no words, no matter how harsh, and no behaviors, no matter how ungodlike they may be, can prevent the miracle of world peace from manifesting on earth through us. Namaste. All right. It's a good day when your mic stays on. Okay, well, this is the time of our service when we get to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much. Thank you all for showing up on this gorgeous day and for uh, being with us. It feels so good for us to be together in person. You know, I drove by one of the bigger, more traditional churches on my way in, and I just thought of this. And uh, It said, and the Lord multiplied their number, and they thrived. So, I started singing Kumbaya, which means, come by here, Lord. And... We know that that's happening, that our numbers can increase and that we also can thrive because we're thriving now. Little old us, we are doing big things and it's because we're in this together. So thank you. Thank you for being here and showing up and really making this a Sunday morning. And thank you for showing up online and joining us from wherever you are. And thank you for your financial support. We are so excited, truly, about this journey. You know, it seems like we've just been packing and packing and packing. <laughs> and that's okay. And there's stuff that we don't need to pack that we're going to give away. So there is a process in all of this. And we're enjoying the process. And it does take financial support. I mean, you could come down and get something at the moving sale, order it. We're selling online, too. But there's even more that you can do. You can decide that what you hear here and how you feel when you hear it is valuable to you and that you would like to see it continue in even greater ways. And if that's the case and you're going, darn, I don't know how to do that because every time at this time I go get a cup of coffee. Well, I hope you're hanging out because our treasurer, Dr. Jamie Phillips, is going to tell you how to do that. <laughs> I don't care if you get a cup of coffee. Just donate. Okay. There's ways to donate. You can turn me down a little bit, Jim. Thanks. I get too excited when I do this. <laughs> um, you can donate to the Life Enrichment Center uh, via Facebook. Our Facebook page is Life Enrichment Center. Well, it's facebook.com forward slash Life Enrichment Center. You can go to our website, lecflint.com. There's a donate button on that site. You can go to PayPal, Laura, and go to lec2512 at paypal.com and donate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what did I say? Oh, yeah, tricky, huh? <laughs> you go to paypal.com. Then you go to lecflint at gmail.com to donate. Thank you. And lastly, you can send in a check. And that is our P.O. Box is Life Enrichment Center, P.O. Box 321-294, Flint, Michigan, 48532. And in the sanctuary, we will be doing an offertory 
while we listen to Daniel Namad and Nemo Patel singing Grateful, and then Reverend Stephanie will be back up for a gratitude prayer. Thank you so much. <laughs> 